1988, these five guys created a software called Power Animator, known back in the days for its ability to create amazing 3D animations and visual effects. It had a relatively long track record, starting with technological threat in 1988 that looked way better than it should, especially for its time. Power Animator was also used to create the water creature in the 1989 film The Abyss, as well as the T-1000 character in Terminator 2 Judgment Day, at a cost of almost half a million dollars per minute. It was also used heavily for many visual effects of the 1996 film Independence Day, just to name a few. Little did these guys know that their software was a predecessor and a stepping stone for a software called Maya that took over the world of computer graphics for the next decades. We have seen many software come and go over the years, the likes of Softimage and Lightwave. So what makes Maya a continuous dominant force in the 3D industries and why still people choose to learn it and use it? Before we answer these questions, let me tell you about today's video sponsor, Class Creatives, who have given us access to their top-ranked game design curriculum online. This will help you learn from experts in the field who also have experience teaching at accredited universities. All courses are taught by seasoned professionals who have worked for companies like Disney Animation, Naughty Dog, Insomnia Games, Sony, Google, and more. Even for beginners, the courses are incredibly simple to follow at your own pace because they are all divided into small segments. However, they all work together to make a thorough entire course. In their masterclass courses, the full character creation workflow is covered from start to finish, including detailed anatomy best practices. You will discover how to expand on solid, basic character sculpting methods to produce beautiful and styled characters. The great thing about class creatives is the ability to learn at your own pace and your own schedule. So get started today with the link in the description and use our unique code to receive a special 25% discount off the pro subscription. Generally speaking, Maya shares the same overall general tools with many other 3D packages, for example Blender, where you can freely model or sculpt, lay out UVs, apply textures, and manipulate shader nodes to your heart's content. You can also generate rigs and animate characters and objects, in addition to creating visual effects and all that. But Maya originally was created with a large-scale production pipeline in mind, meaning its purpose was not to perfect all aspects of the 3D creation process, but rather was built to fit in an industry pipeline that consists of software such as ZBrush, Substance Painter, and so on. By focusing on being the absolute best when it comes to tasks such as modeling, rigging, doing TDs with topology and animation, and leaves the other steps to other specialized software that are also considered the best in their own specialty. For example, you can sculpt a character in ZBrush with extreme precision and detail using tools such as Dynamash, then import it to Maya for creating fast and clean topology, then take it to Substance Painter where you can bake high poly maps or low poly models if it is gonna be intended for games. After that, you will start painting and applying materials using high quality textures. Then later, you can bring everything back to Maya to create some animations and renders. Simply said, Maya has better collaborative project management, not to mention its perfect interoperability with other industry standard tools and formats. Generally speaking, Maya was not meant for creating casual and small 3D projects in the first place, meaning it is not meant for those who take 3D as a hobby only. Because it is for those who want to take their 3D passion into the professional level and use the right tools as a gateway into the industry, whether it be video game development, VFX, or animation. In fact, Maya is currently the standard 3D software in most computer graphics and visual arts colleges, in addition to institutes and universities, and this speaks for itself by preparing aspiring artists to use the best possible software for large-scale productions, which is what big VFX houses and game development studios use. In fact, I would recommend using Blender if you don't have intentions of working in the industry, because it is free and has a lot of resources. But if you are thinking of working for big studios and stuff, having Maya under your belt is gonna give you a great advantage. Another reason that cements Maya in its dominant position in the industry is its ability to integrate powerful third-party plugins created by the best companies in the world in the field of computer graphics software development. 
but in recent years, Maya itself comes with very powerful tools out of the box, such as the amazing mesh tool that creates a network for global control over procedural meshes on a large scale, in addition to Biofrost, which creates some of the most realistic liquid simulations. Because when it was first integrated into Maya, it was a real game changer indeed. We also have XGen, which is used to make realistic looking hair and fur. This in addition to the game exporter tool for both Unreal Engine and Unity to fit the units, pivot and location automatically, in addition to many many other tools. It is also worth mentioning that these amazing tools were in fact all separate, premium and paid plugins for quite a while. That is, till Maya included and integrated them as core Maya tools, blessing its users with more expandable content packed with the license. One more important reason why Maya is still popular and the go-to software in many industries is the fact that it is commonly known to be a very optimized 3D package. Whether it be the stability of its tools and features, or its amazing capability for handling large heavy scenes and animations. If you don't know, Maya offers amazing features in the optimization department. For example, you can use Arnold's instancing system, which is called Standing. Well, Standings allow you to cache out your scene, especially if it has extreme high poly objects into your desk, and replace it by simply a bounding box. Actually, you can apply Standings to all objects on your scene. Many artists use Standings on thousands of high poly objects, such as trees for example, which makes the viewport extremely light as if it is empty. This helps reduce render times from hours to just minutes, which is amazing. Another worth mentioning feature is the GPU caching tool, where you can cache out huge and complicated animations and high poly models. And unlike the previous tool, you still keep them in your scene and have a totally unaffected performance. In addition to other tools and features that make working with Maya a good option for big studios especially. As we all know, Maya is widely recognized as an industry standard 3D package. It has a very strong presence in the industry. It is used to teach in certified big computer graphics institutes and universities as we mentioned. It was and it is still used in most Academy Award winning movies and animations, and also in the development of many of the biggest titles in the video game industry. That being said, after personally going through many job listings of big video game development studios such as Activision Blizzard, Ubisoft, Riot Games, I reviewed their job requirements and it was not a surprise that the most commonly required 3D software was Maya. At the end of the day, of course, the most important factor when it comes to hiring opportunities is your own personal skills, no matter the tool that you're gonna use. But being proficient using a tool that is in high demand is gonna give you an edge in the industry and makes it a good choice for aspiring artists because you will simply greatly increase your opportunities of being hired. This is the case, especially if you have a dream job in mind. Also, one of the most important reasons why Maya is not gonna go away anytime soon is the fact that it is considered to be the leading 3D software in the industry when it comes to animation because it has the best and the most creative tools that enable animators to create highly complex animations that look seamless and realistic. As you might know, Maya was used to create visual effects in several Oscar winning and nominated movies including The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers, Spider-Man, and Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones, and many other blockbuster movies and animations. Beside all that, one of the deciding factors that motivate you to get into a new 3D software and start learning it is the availability of resources. Because of course, why spend a couple of hours trying to make something work on your own when you can learn how to do it in a matter of minutes? just by finding specific instructions on some website, a YouTube video, or a video training. When it comes to Maya, resources are not a problem to worry about, because it has been around for two decades, and it grew to be a mature software where thousands of studios and companies have already explored its advanced features in addition to the tools it provides. Artists have already encountered errors and bugs and found workarounds and solutions, and most of which have gotten updates and fixes by Autodesk themselves. But the main point is, whatever thing you want to learn in Maya, even if it is an in-depth and complicated operation, some artists have definitely faced these issues years ago. 
and have already provided solutions and information to help guide and support you throughout the learning process. Thank you again for Class Creatives for sponsoring this video and thank you guys for watching. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one.